So, Valery Serov, from University of All Finland. Please go ahead, Valery. Okay. I uh, I am going to speak uh, a little bit about some problems uh, which are called usually uh, uh, scattering problems for big harmonic operator. And uh, uh, the the first uh, I would like to explain the motivation motivation why we we need to consider uh, or why we consider operators of order four because uh, biharmonic means operator for the four. And actually these uh, problems quite naturally uh, arise. I mean, uh, these operators of uh, higher order than two, as usually people consider. Uh, and the problems with these operators uh, arise quite uh, naturally. For example, even in the simplest model of Euler-Lagrange equation uh, for beam, um, we breaking. We we can see that uh, derivative of order four uh, will be presented, or even um, uh, more uh, maybe usual example. If you consider a suspension bridge as a beam of length L with hinges ends that uh, then download deflection is measured by function u. That uh, then uh, it satisfies the equation of order four with Navier. And now we are boundary conditions. I would like to see. I would like to show this equation of for the four on the line with respect to x. And this is this equation is not linear. It is quasi linear because uh, u plus is presented here. And another remark: uh, now we are boundary conditions allow us to uh, consider this operator outside uh, this equation outside of this uh, um, of this uh, bridge of. Uh, or this uh, uh, interval of uh, of uh, length L, but everywhere on the line with respect to X. Because uh, the scattering problems usually are connected to the operators which are considered on the whole space. And uh, uh, if you consider some multidimensional uh, problems, sorry, it's too early, then uh, um, uh, if we uh, if we consider beam equation uh, in multi-dimensional case, uh, usually uh, the best reference for this equation concerns to this book of Gazola and et al. Poly polyharmonic boundary value problems. Uh, if we consider this equation for beam, uh, this nonlinear beam equation, uh, in this case under time uh, under time harmonic assumption. Uh, which is quite usual for such type problems. Uh, we we can obtain biharmonic equation as, uh, or static big, uh, how to say uh, static big, big harmonic equation. Uh, and here parameter omega uh, uh, it's a wave number usually uh, it is usually fixed in general. But uh, if we uh, assume for this parameter to be very large. Uh, then we can um, apply some limiting process, and uh, then we can apply uh, or use even uh, more correctly appropriate numerical methods. Yeah. So uh, I will would like to, to repeat shortly that uh, the operators uh, of order four, which we are going to consider in multi-dimensional case as well as in in one-dimensional case, uh, arise. Um, quite naturally in many models, in Euler-Lagrange, for example, equation, or uh, in some uh, equations for bridges uh, with Navier boundary conditions. And uh, more uh, appropriate example in this case, it's a, a multi-dimensional non-linear beam equation. And uh, the reference here is Gazola. Usually people use this reference. And uh, uh, under time harmonic assumption, uh, this uh, uh, equation uh, leads to be to the biharmonic equation, uh, which is um, not dynamic, just static. This parameter omega, uh, which is wave parameter or wave number, uh, and usually it is fixed. But uh, if we assume that omega is quite big, then we can um, apply some limiting process and. Uh, so that's why we will uh, use uh, this parameter omega uh, not fixed, but uh, 
and, and this allows us to consider some scattering problems with high frequency for this potential equation. So now uh, the, the equation which I, I'm going to consider for this presentation, uh, the following one. This is uh, just uh, Bill Laplacian, and this is a vector valued function W, a gradient, and this is a potential V. And I, I am going to consider uh, only uh, three dimensions, first, two, and, and third. And in general, this function W and V are complex valued. And such that that uh, function V and W, uh, where instead of nonlinearities uh, unit, uh, uh, we have instead of nonlinearities unit, this function depending only on X must be from LP, this locally with some P depending on N, on N and uh, has special behavior at the infinity such that this function is just from L1. And uh, mm, at the same time, for non-linearities, we need uh, such uh, type of conditions, which are quite usual. It's Lipschitz conditions for, for this function V and W with respect to the uh, variable which uh, concerns to the non-linearities. I would like to, to tell that uh, uh, non-linearities of such type where we have not U but modulus of U, it's quite physical because usually uh, uh, in some, in many models, uh, nonlinearity uh, depends or function depends on on the intensity of the field, not uh, on uh, field itself. And modulus of U corresponds to the intensity of the field. So this is a quite general condition. In in some uh, other cases, we will um, change or will we will uh, add some more conditions when it is needed. For the moment, we have only this three conditions and uh, then we will continue. Um, uh, since we consider the, the main idea, how uh, we can use the scattering uh, behavior of the solutions or um, uh, the solutions of this differential equation of order four uh, for far, in, far, in, far, in, in far away or uh, with, uh, uh, with X big enough. For these purposes, we uh, are investigating the, the special, so, special solutions of this uh, differential equation uh, uh, or the solutions in such special form where you note know this is a, plan, a pl plane wave, uh, exponent i k x theta x theta in the brackets it's in the product in Rn and the uh, angle theta from the unit sphere and um, uh, the scattering field uh, or the uh, the second uh, part of this uh, equation must satisfy uh, Zomerfeld radiation conditions. I would like to this uh, conditions. I would like to pay your attention that compare this Schrodinger operator or this operator for the two for operator for the four. We need two two uh, uh, Zomerfeld radiation conditions for. U scattered and for Laplacian of U scattered. It's quite interesting phenomena uh, for operator for the four. If you consider uh, high operators, uh, six or eight and so on, then uh, of course we will have more, uh, even more uh, radiation conditions than for B harmonic. So we need uh, to consider uh, uh, such. Uh, such solution of this differential equation, which satisfies such type of conditions. And uh, in this case, it is possible to prove it. It's some kind of independent uh, uh, research. And we need to um, uh, investigate this in, uh, additionally. It is possible to do it. We, we, we did it with my uh, students that uh, under these conditions, uh, this scattering solution or the solutions of such form uh, which are uh, of the uh, are the unique solutions of the uh, this integral equation, uh, which is just generalization of usual lipman schrodinger equation for the Schrodinger operator. So this is a plane wave, and this is function g k plus, which is uh, and this combination of our um, uh, coefficients and our solution u, and uh, where fun function g k plus uh, is the outgoing fundamental solution of operator delta squared 
uh, minus K4. Uh, it is also possible to prove that it is the kernel of the integral operator uh, delta squared minus K in power 4 minus I0 in power minus 1. It's uh, integral operator and its kernel exactly this function G. And in, in this uh, case, this function can be calculated precisely. It, it, uh, this formula gives us uh, the, the formula for this fundamental solution. Uh, in this formula, uh, everything is written uh, clearly. Uh, the only thing which I would like to tell is that uh, H and uh, K are H nu and K nu are the Hankel and McDonald's function of order nu and uh, Han uh, Hankel function of first, uh, of first kind, uh, respectively. So roughly speaking, this part uh, corresponds to uh, uh, delta minus k squared, uh, and this part corresponds to delta plus k squared, or vice versa, maybe I am wrong. So uh, it is possible to prove uh, using Agmon's technique uh, about this uh, function gk plus, but what it is possible to prove due to Agmon's estimate for operator minus delta minus k squared, because uh, operator minus, um, uh, sorry, delta squared minus k in power 4 minus i0 in, in power minus 1 uh, can be represented uh, uh, using some combination of inverse to this operator and uh, of operator minus delta plus k squared inverse of this. So, uh, using uh, uh, quite well known Ag Agmon's estimates for this, uh, uh, for this operator, uh, for inverse of this operator, um, um, more, more clearly to say, uh, we, can obtain, we can obtain these estimates for, for, uh, for these operators, uh, where k in the denominating power 3 minus s is quite uh, important that we have uh, vanishing behavior of these norms in, in large k. And uh, Ws2 minus delta and L2 delta, it's usual Sobolev and uh, uh, Lebesgue spaces with uh, some weight, uh, depending on uh, polynomial of 1 plus modulus of x, uh, and so on. So, but it is very uh, nice estimate, but unfortunately, uh, we can obtain here using this estimate. We can obtain uh, only the uh, estimate uh, of, uh, of this uh, scattered field only um, in the space W12. But it's not uh, enough because, because for nonlinearity, we need to have estimates for scattered field in L infinity or in W1 infinity, because otherwise we are not able to operate with uh, notations for quasi-linear operators. So, Instead of this quite classical estimates for scattered field, we need to, to obtain solvability in different type of spaces, namely in the Sobolev spaces W1 infinity of Rn. And it's due to, uh, uh, due to the nonlinearity. If we have no nonlinearity, then it's not needed to consider such spaces. But for nonlinear equations, uh, for equations with nonlinear coefficients, uh, we need to use, instead of such type of estimates, estimates in W1 infinity. So that's why uh, uh, this is an independent problem, and, and it must be solved. It's called the direct problem, and I, I would like to formulate the result, precise result in this case. So if we, uh, if we assume that uh, W, V, B, B, uh, w, uh, B, excuse me, beta W, beta V, these functions from Lipschitz conditions, conditions for nonlinearity. If we assume that this function belong to belong to LP log uh, of Rn for such values of n, where p are greater than maximum one uh, n over one and n over two, or less or equal than infinity, and uh, have special behavior at the infinity, uh, such type of behavior at the infinity, where mu greater than n. Then for any row, uh, there exists uh, such k not greater than zero that for all k greater than or equal than k not, the lipman schwinger equation with respect to scattered field has a unique solution in the closed ball uh, in this space W1 infinity. 
and these uh, scattered fields such ta sa have such estimates. Uh, estimates depend uh, on n, of course, uh, in power k. I mean, uh, power k depends on n. Uh, I would like to to pay pay your attention that uh, uh, the best estimate, of course, we have for one dimensional case. For two dimensional case, we have also not so bad estimates, but for three dimensional case, as the estimates is is not so good, at least for the uh, gradient of u scatter of of the scattered field. And um, maybe this is the nature of this type of problems for quasi-linear equations, but nevertheless, uh, such is what we can prove. And uh, uh, for n for one dimensional case, we may consider instead of such type of conditions for functions uh, w, v, beta, uh, w and beta v, uh, only uh, assumptions that they are from L1 on the whole line without special behavior at the infinity. So this is direct problem, and in order to prove, we have used uh, uh, Banach fixed point theorem uh, in the uh, Banach space W1 infinity on the whole space Rn with uh, subspace, which is this ball. So it's quite a well known technique, and we need to use only good estimates uh, for function gk plus, point-wise estimates for function gk plus, in order to obtain this uh, this uh, result. So nevertheless, it is it is proved, and due to this, uh, it is possible to obtain the asymptotic behavior for our solution uh, for for fixed k and uh, uniformly in angles theta and uh, for uh, x big enough. So uh, we can obtain asymptotic behavior for, for the field in the far, in, in the far zone, in the far zone. And uh, this behavior uh, or this asymptotic behavior has the following form. This is plane wave, it's clear. And uh, this uh, second term in this uh, asymptotic representation, it's equal to the following value. Cn, this is a constant depending only on dimensions. This is k in, in such uh, power exponent, modulus of x. And this function, uh, which uh, has the following precise form, it's called the scaling amplitude for biharmonic equation. And uh, this function a gives us actually the data for, uh, for inverse problems or the data for recon reconstruction of singularities for function w and, and for function v. Uh, this is generalization of, of the usual formula for the scaling amplitude in one-dimensional case, in uh, multi-dimensional case for the Schrodinger operator as well. Uh, the only thing I would like to tell that for uh, one-dimensional case, say it and say the prime, not uh, the angles, uh, in the on the unit sphere in the corresponding uh, space, but only the values which are equal plus minus one uh, in one dimensional case, uh, two different directions, plus or minus infinity, the only. So, uh, and then now the first result, which is uh, can be considered as the uh, result which co corresponds to the reconstruction of singularities of uh, the coefficients of uh, big harmonic operator. Uh, the first result it's a famous uh, formula or analog of formula Yoshimi Saito, which uh, first was proved by Saito maybe 40 years ago for, for the Schrodinger operator with smooth potential. And this formula says that uh, this limit uh, where we have integration with respect to um, angles. Uh, theta is angle uh, from plane wave, and theta prime is, if maybe you remember, it's um, uh, uh, the, the angle of observation. Uh, it is actually equal, uh, theta prime is equal to x divided by modulus of x originally. So uh, formula, this formula says that this limit uh, exists, and it is equal precisely such uh, convolution. And uh, uh, here in this convolution, uh, we have function v minus one half gradient of w divided by x minus y in power n minus one. Uh, 
this limit holds uniformly for n which is equal to 2, but only in the sense of temporary distributions if n is equal to 3. And the problem for n which is equal to 3 is that this function in x may have some singularities compared with this function in x when n is equal to 2. Uh, uh, for n which is equal to 2 under our conditions for the for the coefficients uh, for the function w v beta w and beta v, this function has no singularities. But for three-dimensional case, it has some singularities, so that's why it is uh, difficult to prove uh, uniform convergence bonds. It is possible to prove in the sense of distributions. And also it's due to the fact that uh, a fundamental solution in three-dimensional case has not so good behavior in K. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we have this formula, and uh, uh, it's a little bit strange, but uh, this formula is valid also in one-dimensional case, but of course, if you write this in one-dimensional case, uh, instead of integration with respect to uh, theta and theta prime uh, on the unit sphere, we need only to, to take the scaling, the scaling amplitude and some points, plus minus one. And in one-dimensional case, this formula transforms to this uh, to this uh, result. Uh, this is, uh, so to say, limit of such uh, uh, four terms. And maybe it's too complicated uh, uh, to explain everything here, but it's uh, for people who uh, uh, ask the specialist in one-dimensional uh, skating problems, it is clear that this is just inverse Fourier transform of uh, uh, some uh, uh, values because u plus and u minus here is just uh, 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 exponents this plus minus in the uh, in the power uh, for for large values of k I mean uh, and with such derivatives and so that's why it's quite uh, clear uh, in one dimensional case. Uh, it can be explained, of course, without CITES, CITES formula, just straightforwardly. But uh, nevertheless, if we consider formally uh, for CITES formula uh, for one-dimensional case, uh, then we will obtain the same result. It, it is presented here. But actually, it makes uh, not big sense because uh, convolution in the... Let me re uh, return. Convolution in in two and three dimensional cases for this CITES formula allows us to somehow to solve this equation. If you know this limit, then since we have a convolution, we can solve uh, this uh, integral equation of convolution type with respect to unknown function, which I, I, I will call later like beta. But in one dimensional case, uh, this uh, unfortunately this information uh, this result doesn't make any sense because this is just a constant and we are not able to invert invert it in order to obtain this function at least from science formula it is impossible it can be done differently by a different procedure but not by science formula and uh, mm, uh, the CITES formula has independent interest because um, it allows to prove the uniqueness, uniqueness result uh, in multi-dimensional case with respect to reconstruction of unknown function. In this case, uh, under the unknown function, I, I will mean uh, this, this combination, V minus one half gradient of W. Uh, and uh, the uniqueness result says that if you have two pairs coefficients w1 v1 w2 v2 uh, then the and and the corresponding scaling amplitudes uh, a1 and a2 respectively to this uh, with respect to these coefficients if this uh, um, uh, scaling amplitudes coincide for some sequence kj which tends to plus infinity and uh, they coincide for all angles, say and say the prime. Sometimes this uh, in inverse problem is called uh, inverse scaling problem with full data because we have all uh, all angles, say and say the prime. But nevertheless, it's interesting. Uh, then in this case, uh, this function uh, 
this combination of functions uh, are equal to each other almost everywhere in Rn. So we have uniqueness for reconstruction of this combination, not of each of these functions, V and W, but of such special type of combination. And another, uh, 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 another consequence uh, or another corollary from CITES formula is uh, this uh, formula, representation formula for this uh, unknown combination. And uh, of course, this formula uh, holds only in the sense of temporary distributions for all um, for n which is equal to 2 and n equal to 3. So for both dimensions. Uh, and actually, in one dimensional case, also this formula is valid and it, it has some special form. Uh, this value is equal to such combination, but of course, we need to rewrite instead of scattering amplitude uh, here and here in one dimensional case and uh, uh, substitute then and we will obtain this formula. So uh, this formula is also valid in one D case uh, formally, but in the sense of temper distributions. So that's why uh, one result is already obtained, uh, a result of reconstruction, uh, not of singularities, but reconstruction of some unknown function in such form. Of course, uh, it can be considered as, as the reconstruction of singularities as well, if we, if we use uh, 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 the formula, uh, representation formula. Okay. Uh, since uh, uh, maybe uh, I have some, uh, I have some information, or I mean, I have some uh, new results uh, with respect to to the linear case. But probably I will miss for the moment because we spend uh, a lot of time. I would like to to consider uh, uh, Born approximation uh, in quasi linear case. Maybe if I have some minutes, I will return to the linear problem because it's interesting because uh, there is some new data uh, for inverse problems which allow us to reconstruct unknown coefficients but probably I will skip for the moment this uh, uh, linear case and I would like to uh, to consider now Born approximation. So uh, the properties of the uh, of the solutions of the scattering solutions uh, and asymptotical behavior, uh, these solutions with large K, uh, allows us, uh, allow us to obtain such asymptotical representation for uh, the scattering amplitude uh, when uh, the angle theta prime is equal to minus theta. Usually, this problem in scattering theory is called uh, backscattering problem. Uh, if theta prime, when the angle of observation is equal to uh, minus or it's opposite to the angle of uh, uh, plane wave. Uh, in this case, it is possible to obtain or to, to, to prove that uh, uh, um, um, the skating amplitude has such um, asymptotical uh, behavior with large K. So uh, as you see right now, here we have Fourier transform of the uh, gradient of W, and this is Fourier transform of V at the point 2 K theta. And this representation uh, justifies the following definition. Uh, the inverse backscattering Born approximation, which I call like VBB for the operator of uh, operator H4 uh, of for the 4, is defined as the inverse Fourier transform of the scattering amplitude in terms of the a variable k and theta, or this is just this integral. This is the usual inverse Fourier transform uh, written in uh, polar coordinates or spherical coordinates, depending on the dimensions. So this is uh, the, Born, the backscattering Born approximation. And uh, uh, this uh, Born approximation allows us to reconstruct uh, singularities. Uh, by the way, excuse me. Uh, this formula uh, is valid not only in quasi-linear, not only in linear case, and also in quasi-linear case. Uh, of course, in this case, uh, uh, we have here, uh, uh, instead of W and V, 
uh, we have a uh, uh, function uh, where instead of uh, no excuse me uh, in, in linear in in quasi linear case uh, w depends on two variables uh, uh, x and modulus of u but of course here we have uh, gradient uh, which is a, applied which is applying to w at the point x uh, comma unit as well as here so instead of non-linearity we have here a unit no uh, far field or no um, intensity of the field modulus of field uh, and uh, here now we have the uh, 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 so the same for the same definition holds in in linear case as well, and uh, in linear case we can um, uh, we can obtain the following result <coughs> about the reconstruction of singularities. Uh, please have a look. Uh, it is possible to prove that the difference between a Born approximation and this combination of unknown functions. Uh, again, uh, uh, quite naturally appears as in the in the side of formula uh, uh, as well and in the uh, Born approximation, the same combination V minus one half gradient of W. And it is possible to prove that this difference belongs to to the sobre space W2 uh, W2T uh, of Rn uh, modular C infinity functions. Uh, for any t uh, less than 6 minus n over 2. Uh, what uh, does it mean, this, uh, this result, uh, with respect to the reconstruction of singularities? If, for example, if we consider uh, n which is equal to 2, and this is only two and three dimensions here. If we consider, uh, uh, if we consider a, a two-dimensional case, then here in this inequality, t less than 2. If we, we know that this difference be, be belongs to W2T where T are arbitrary but less than 2, then it is clear that uh, due to uh, Sobolev embedding theorem, this difference will be continuous function. It means that uh, Born approximation and this combination of functions has uh, the same singularities and jumps. So we can reconstruct, because this difference is continuous function. So that's why we can reconstruct all jumps and all singularities of this unknown combination uh, using the Born approximation, because they have the same uh, singularities. If n is equal to 3, then t less than 3 over 2. And uh, uh, when t less than 3 over 2, it doesn't allow us to conclude that uh, this difference is continuous function because uh, again due to Sobolev embedding theorem we are not able to conclude that this difference is continuous function but it's almost continuous because t very close to 3 over 2 and that's why uh, in in three dimensional case we can reconstruct all jump uh, oh, sorry all singularities but from lp where p strictly less than infinity not p which is equal to infinity but strictly less than infinity but not uh, from L infinity uh, because of, uh, of this value for N, which is equal to three. And it, it's, it, it explains uh, in this uh, um, embedding uh, for Sobolev spaces. Uh, so uh, in two dimensional case, in linear, uh, in linear case, for two dimensional case, situation is very, very, very good and very determined. In three dimensional case, in linear case, it's uh, not so, but not not uh, not so bad. And uh, uh, for quasi-linear situation, uh, we need some additional conditions for non-linearities. Uh, w uh, must uh, must be such that it's it's like uh, Taylor expansion with respect to this variable at the point one for small values of s, and this is the same for function v. And we need some uh, additional conditions for function W star, V star, W two stars, and uh, V two, da, two stars uh, in order to obtain corresponding result for quasi-linear case, I mean Born approximation for quasi-linear case. It's uh, some regularity for with respect to uh, uh, Sobolev spaces W1P or just Lebesgue spaces LP for function V. So uh, there are some uh, additional conditions 
because of nonlinearity. And uh, the result is, uh, uh, is much better in two dimensional case. So that's why I would like to, to represent res result for two dimensional case. For three dimensional case, it's not so good. So that's why we are not able to conclude, uh, uh, conclude uh, appropriate uh, corollary from the reconstruction of for the reconstruction of singularities, but in two-dimensional case uh, we can prove in quasi-linear case in quasi-linear case that this difference again with this combination of the coefficients this difference uh, belongs to the Sobler space HT where T strictly less than than one in linear case it was T strictly le uh, was strictly less than two but in quasi-linear case uh, uh, t less than one uh, only. Unfortunately, we are not able to prove better result for the moment. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's even impossible. I don't know. Uh, but nevertheless, even for such values of t, we may conclude that this difference uh, due to sober embedding theorem, uh, this difference uh, uh, using this effect, we can reconstruct all singularities from LP where p strictly less than infinity, greater or equal than 2, but strictly less than infinity. We are not able to reconstruct all uh, uh, jumps, but we can reconstruct all uh, singularities uh, from LP, where p strictly less than infinity for two-dimensional case. And there is one special uh, situation when uh, we can reconstruct even jumps in two-dimensional case. but in this case, we must consider the jumps over some smooth curves. If we have, uh, uh, if we assume for the moment that this function uh, uh, has uh, uh, some um, jumps over uh, smooth curves, then we can reconstruct these jumps also. Even it's from L infinity, but this is not arbitrary jump. It's jump all only over smooth curves. And uh, in this case, we, we can do it using this result. But it's uh, not so interesting because uh, the most important uh, to reconstruct singularities, singularities of, of, of this combination from LP where P is thicker than, uh, than, um, than infinity. And uh, uh, actually, in the end of my uh, presentation, I would like to consider one dimensional case uh, a little bit more carefully because uh, from my point of view, this is very interesting results uh, with um, quasi-linear situation. Uh, if I have some minutes, I would like to explain one dimensional case independently. Uh, May, may I use some 15 minutes or less, or what? Yes, yes, of yeah. course, please. Okay. So let me let me continue only for one, one dimensional case. Uh, in one dimensional case, uh, uh, it is possible to prove. Uh, let me let me tell one thing. It is clear that uh, in one dimensional case, uh, uh, for operator for the four, which we consider, uh, of course, this equation with this operator has uh, not only uh, bounded solutions, as we have considered. Of course, there are some unbounded, unbounded solutions, which uh, has uh, exponential uh, growing up at the infinity. And of course, we didn't consider these uh, uh, solutions. We consider only the scattering solutions. And uh, uh, so that's why we have only two coefficients, which like for, um, for the Schrodinger operator, uh, for uh, operator for the four, uh, if we take into account unbounded solutions for our differential equations, then not only these two coefficients may appear, but uh, some other two coefficients uh, may appear uh, in the asymptotic behavior of the solutions. Of course, in this case, instead of this exponent, will be exponent as uh, just i exponent power kx without i. And here we have exponent power minus kx without i. So it's, it's not oscillating, but uh, unbounded solutions. We ignore such type of solutions. We consider only the scattering solutions, as I explained. So that's why we have, an, as in, in, for, for the Schrodinger operator, we have only two coefficients. 
uh, if you consider uh, uh, asymptotic behavior of our solution, our scattering solutions, when x tends to plus infinity, we can obtain coefficients a of k, which is called transmission coefficient. And if we consider our solution when x tends to minus infinity, we have uh, such combination of uh, plane waves. And this uh, coefficient b, it's called reflection coefficient, as in as for the Schrodinger operator. And these coefficients can be uh, precise. I mean, uh, there are such formulas for transmission coefficients and for reflection coefficient. And for the Born approximation, it turns out that for the Born approximation in one dimensional case, we do not need even the transmission coefficient. Of course, for uniqueness result, we have we need to have all four coefficients for big harmonic operator. But for reconstruction of singularities, we need only the um, reflection coefficient, which is uh, equal to this value. And you can see why is it so? Because if you uh, if you look to this uh, integral, and if you consider, uh, if you take into account that function u uh, uh, for large values of k behaves like uh, the same exponent. So that's why if you substitute roughly b, um, instead of u this exponent uh, with uh, big k, then we have Fourier transform of this combination. So that's why uh, uh, it is uh, important information. But if we substitute here, uh, this uh, instead of x plane power i k x, instead of u, x plane power i k y, sorry. Then these two exponents here and here, I need, they, they will cancel each other. So that's why uh, the transmission coefficients uh, has no uh, needed information for reconstruction of singularity. So that's why we will take um, we will consider uh, further only the reflection coefficient. And uh, uh, the behavior of this reflection coefficient uh, allows to introduce the Born approximation uh, in, this one di in, in, in the one-dimensional case as the following inverse Fourier transform of the following value, because this is uh, our reflection coefficient at the point k over 2. Um, k in power three, and this this constant it is clear just uh, uh, um, because we have one dimensional case, and the Born approximation is divided like uh, is defined like this, inverse Fourier transform of such combination where b only uh, reflection coefficient, and uh, uh, due to this fact, due to this definition, and due to the properties of um, uh, fundamental solution for one dimensional case of our operator for the four, uh, we can obtain the formula, the following formula for the Born approximation. Born approximation can be up to the continuous function, can be calculated as follows. The real part of function beta, beta again, look, again, this combination, even it is in uh, one dimensional case. As, as for multi-dimensional case, as it was before. So that's why we will have here the real part of uh, this function beta. And this is uh, Hilbert transform uh, of imaginary part of beta. And uh, so roughly speaking, Born approximation up to the continuous, up to the continuous functions is equal to this sum, real part of beta plus uh, Hilbert transform of imaginary part of beta. This is uh, quite a new fact, uh, uh, I think, quite new fact for scatter and theory for, for the four, uh, even for linear situation. And uh, for example, from, from this formula, we can obtain the following fact. Let us assume for the moment that function V and W uh, are real. In this case, the transform disappears because imaginary part is equal to zero of beta. And we will have here only beta instead of real part. And uh, the result is the difference between uh, Born approximation and function beta, or uh, this combination of unknown functions, is continuous function on the whole line. So it means that again, uh, the jumps and singularities of function beta, of this, for this function beta, the same, uh, uh, as uh, the 
uh, jumps and singularities of the Born approximation. So whenever you have Born approximation, uh, then you can reconstruct on all all uh, jumps and all singularities of function beta. And uh, what is interesting is that, um, of course, uh, we we are not able to dis distinct uh, singularities of V and singularities of W if they have both singularities. Of course, th such is, uh, so to say, nature of this problem. But there is some special case when we can recon reconstruct uh, independently on the singularities of function V. Even W is presented, and even W prime has some singularities. Uh, this, uh, uh, this is valid in, uh, in the case when our operator is linear and self-adjoint. Let me show this, let me show this uh, result because I think it's quite interesting. So let us consider a linear one-dimensional Fosodo uh, equation of such form. This is self-adjoint, formally self-adjoint, because uh, uh, coefficients are combined so that this is you can you can check this is self-adjoint operator in the left-hand side. Of course, if we assume that W and V are real value functions, and what is interesting. Uh, then uh, the Born approximation in this case uh, gives us uh, only the reconstruction of, uh, of function V, even uh, in, uh, in this case, W has some uh, singularities. I'm not, not W, but W prime. Uh, so self-adjoint in the self-adjoint case, case, but for linear situation, uh, sorry, only for linear situation, uh, uh, is uh, uh, is organized so that that the uh, W prime disappears from the Born approximation due to the self adjointness. I think so. That's why in the Born approximation for, for this self adjoint case, uh, only function V is presented. So that's why we can reconstruct uh, all jumps and all singularities of unknown function W. Uh, even w, uh, uh, of sorry of function v, even w is presented. But of course, w has no singularities in this theorem because w uh, belongs to uh, to the Sobolev space w11. It, it it means that uh, this is continuous function. But derivative of w may have some some singularities. But nevertheless, the Born approximation excludes. Uh, the W prime and gives us only the uh, uh, the reconst uh, only only the jumps and the singularities of unknown function V. So this is a uh, I, I, I would like to say that this is interesting phenomenon of self adjointness uh, for for operator for the four when uh, W and V are both presented in this equation. Uh, so probably this is what I wanted uh, to to tell. And I'm sorry for for the problems which we will have, which we had with uh, connection. But uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Valery, for your very interesting talk. And this is time for some questions. Please, if there are questions. This is a very interesting observation, uh, which uh, uh, you mentioned in the end of, of your talk, that uh, this Born approximation uh, discriminates this W. Effect. That, yes, yes, this is interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, it, 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 it's not clear why, but... Okay. I, I can because, explain why. It's, if you consider uh -huh. function beta, Yes. Uh, in this uh, in this equation, One, uh, maybe I need to consider in the beginning because it's not written. So if you consider uh, this, let us assume that it's one dimensional case W without modulus of U, just function W. This is U prime and this is V. 
And this is general situation. It's not self-adjoint, of course. And uh, in this case, we can reconstruct <coughs> we can reconstruct singularities of v minus one half w prime. And if we rewrite now, if we rewrite now our self-adjoint equation in such form, I mean, let us uh, uh, just a minute. If we uh, if we include i w prime and v like v uh, uh, like v with tilde because it's coefficient in front of u, and uh, this will be our w with two i. Mm -hmm. And if we now write beta in this case, it will be v with tilde, so v uh, plus i v prime minus one half of this value prime. So v, v v still the will be equal v plus i v prime because it's coefficient in run in front of u, and this is coefficient in front in front of u prime. You need to uh, to differentiate this value and uh, tell uh, take one half so two disappear and uh, then you can you must consider minus and yes. this minus with one half and this. Uh, can be cancelled by each other, and so we will obtain only v. <laughs> so this is a, this is the conclusion of the general result. If we rewrite, if we rewrite this self-adjoint equation in in the form uh, uh, like uh, w is still the u prime plus v is still the u. Yeah, thank you. Maybe maybe uh, due to this property. Thank you. Uh, are there questions? Please uh, raise a hand, uh, Professor Alexander Smirnov. Okay, please go ahead because I don't see hands. Uh, in uh, the case of uh, ordinary Schrodinger operators, uh, uh, we can use uh, the solutions of uh, the Lippmann Schwinger equation. Uh, to uh, write uh, uh, an eigen, eigen, eigenfunction expansion, a kind of distorted Fourier transform. Is it possible in your case uh, when, uh, in, when uh, uh, there are no nonlinearities and uh, the potentials are real? So do you, do you mean that uh, it, it, is it possible to to obtain some expansions for quasi-linear case or yes yes uh, uh, expansion uh, uh, using uh, the solutions of uh, the Lippmann Schwinger equation yeah, yeah I, I understood I understood but uh, of course uh, this in quasi-linear case it's difficult to say about eigen eigenvalues and eigenfunctions but if if I, I, have, I, I meant uh, uh, if there are no non-linearities. Ah, do you mean in linear case? Yes. So we have just W without modulus of U and V. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I don't know. I don't know. It's also a good question for linear case uh, uh, to, to obtain some expansions. But uh, for Schrodinger equation, uh, the situation is a little bit different because uh, and roughly speaking, we have no other solutions than uh, uh, solutions which are uh, which are bounded for for Schrodinger, for linear Schrodinger. But here we 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 may have some uh, un, I think some un, unbounded solutions. So that's why it, maybe it's difficult to obtain some expansions. I I, I don't know, but it's very good question, and we. Uh, we discuss uh, with some people about such possibility, but I have no answer. Uh, thank you, and thank you for a very interesting talk. Thank you. Other questions, please? Well, I see one more. Oh, no, no. No hands. Okay. So if there are no questions, then thank you very much again, Valery Sergeyevich. Thank you. Thank you for the very interesting. Thank you.